look for. Um, it's good to kind of understand what's going on under the hood as you're doing this upgrade. It's a three-step process. Starts with the global rules check, uh, which uh, if, if you run the upgrade advisor and um, use the, the planning resources in the install center, this actually will do that global rules check ahead of time and then will alert you about any, any compatibility concerns, you know, firewall ports and, and uh, you know, outdated hardware, that kind of thing. Um, it does the component update, replacing those DLLs and other component files, and then it goes ahead and, and, and does what you told it to do. It goes ahead and upgrades that instance as you had requested. Um, and then uh, the setup um, is, is called a number of different times, and then the details of, of those setup actions are uh, stored in these files, the de detailed global re uh, rules, detailed component update, and detail.txt files. So it'll actually record uh, the begin, middle, and end of each of those actions as evidence that that either succeeded or failed. So this is the uh, list of deprecated features for reporting services. Uh, bear in mind that reporting services really hasn't changed between SQL Server 2012 and 2014 much. Um, and so this applies to both versions. So report models and uh, report builder one all reports no longer supported. You, you just simply shouldn't be using them anymore. Um, in uh, rendering extensions, uh, the device information uh, uh, switch for rendering extensions, um, these actions are no longer supported. They've actually been replaced by other actions. So it's not that features are going away. They've, they've just been upgraded and changed. Um, the um, RDL 2005 uh, schema will be deprecated. So even though we did see compatibility uh, for um, RDL 2005, um, that is on the deprecation list. So you will want to upgrade mm -hmm. those reports eventually. And as I mentioned, the Word and Excel uh, 2003 or 1997 to 2003. So it is the 2003 rendering. Um, uh, format, um, that is also on the deprecation list, uh, still available, but you should roll off of, of those as well. And by default, you will. They'll be upgraded. So, Paul, is, uh, in SSIS, when you upgrade, uh, it's an opportunity to refactor. With SSRS in an upgrade, is this an opportunity to do any housekeeping? Maybe reports aren't even being run anymore. They're just in the environment, uh, anything unique about this opportunity with respect to the overall maintenance of your reporting environment? Well, I think that uh, in any upgrade or maintenance cycle is an opportunity to review those items that, that you referred to. And uh, the, the, uh, the, the question of whether a report is in use is, is an important one, as, as you've seen, because you asked you ask the question, as, as I've also seen. Uh, it's very common for reports to get deployed out to the report server, and you know they sit out there for years. And if somebody isn't going and, and visiting the logs and checking those things, then you know it's just something that needs to be maintained. So absolutely, and that's a step that I would always recommend in an upgrade. Um, it, it's, and it's always a step that I recommend when we implement new BI solutions, as we uh, transition kind of operational reporting environments into more BI-centric and dashboard-centric environments, we'll always go back and say, hey, you know, you, there's these 50 reports out in this folder. Are you actually using them? So, mm -hmm. yes, it's an opportunity. Um, you, you don't have to, and there's nothing automated about this process that's going to do that for you. Sure, But sure. I, I think that's always, uh, housekeeping is always an important Sure, step. maybe proliferation of data sources, which is a problem that can occur where everybody has their version of a data source maybe deployed yeah. into the environment. I, I will say that um, we, we learn as we move forward, and product upgrades are a good opportunity to kind of step back and look at where we've been. How, how have we designed reports? So for example, um, a lot of folks migrating from other reporting tools are used to using subreports. Mm -hmm. And subreports are not a design pattern that I promote in the reports that I create. Sometimes they're necessary, and reporting services uh, provide support for subreports. But it, it's, it's not my favorite feature. It's mm -hmm. something that I try to avoid. 
And oftentimes we'll see a lot of sub-reports in those old 2000 and 2005 reports that were created by people who grew up on other reporting tools and then moved to reporting services. This is a good mm -hmm. opportunity to step back and say, you know, there, there may be Excel rendering problems with those reports yeah, that contain yeah. sub-reports. This is a good chance to step back, yeah. redesign those reports, stream, streamline them, use um, shared data sources rather than a lot of embedded data sources, for example. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and maybe an opportunity to move from native mode to SharePoint if you're in an environment where it makes sense to take advantage of SharePoint as well. Sure. Well, yeah. Good, yeah. Thank Good you. Um, and then some other miscellaneous uh, things on, on uh, this slide that uh, are just kind of good check boxes. Um, really uh, in the category of, of things to know about if you're doing deep and advanced custom solutions. If you're using reporting services out of the box, you, you don't need to worry about custom report items. Um, uh, some good information about the way that snapshots work, so the, the way that snapshots are architected is a little bit differently, and the way that instance caching works uh, was changed a little bit, so, so um, you, you may need to, to reapply snapshots to reports after you upgrade from 2005. And then the, the web services uh, endpoints have changed. There have been new web services uh, uh, added, so uh, if your uh, developers are using um, the, the reporting services web service endpoints, they may just change, need to change their references to the new, to the new endpoints. Which brings us to the summary slide. So um, uh, the er latest version, I'm sorry, so the earliest version of reporting services that you can upgrade from is uh, reporting services in SQL Server 2005 SP4. And then you can move those reports uh, up to any later version, uh, but, uh, which of course includes SQL Server 2012 or 2014. And uh, no significant differences between those two versions of reporting services. Uh, we talked about doing an in-place or side-by-side -side upgrade. Uh, really depends on kind of how confident you are about uh, uh, how that will go. And uh, if in doubt, then do a side-by-side -side upgrade or do a POC. Do an upgrade to a POC server and just make sure that that goes well. Always make a backup, uh, even though um, it, it may look like things will go extremely well. Always good to make a backup of the database configuration files um, and that uh, encryption key file. Run the SQL Server Upgrade Advisor uh, for SQL Server 2014 to learn about any potential issues, any hardware or component compatibility issues or anything that you may need to install or change in your environment before proceeding with your upgrade. Um, when you install the client tools for, uh, for SQL Server, that will install the Visual Studio 2012 shell with the SST for BI add-in, but then you can install uh, newer versions of Visual Studio or different editions of Visual Studio to take advantage of things like source code control and and uh, development tools. And um, then you upgrade the reporting services instance using the SQL Server Upgrade option, which is launched from the Install Center. So uh, we have a lot of reference material here. Reporting services has been around for a long time, so there's just a lot of good uh, reference material and a lot of good documentation out there because it's just a really well-supported product and um, a lot of good information from Microsoft. So with that, um, Jim? Thank, thank you, thank you Paul. I, I, I always learn something new when I listen to you. Well, thank and, you very and, much. And, and as well. So uh, you as well, Jim. Thank so you. thank you much, and thank you uh, for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next time, and we'll see you out there.